This is Kelvin Kiptum crossing the finish line at last year's Chicago Marathon, where he set a new world record time of two hours and 35 seconds. And these are the exact shoes he used to do it. It's gonna be a pretty cool video. Oh my God, have I got a corker of a video for you guys today. Welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name's Dan, and in today's video, we're going to be doing a full review on Nike's newest super shoe, the Nike Alpha Fly 3. And let me tell you, the word super doesn't quite cut it. We're going to do a full deep dive into the specifications of this shoe and highlight all the new improvements Nike has made to the Alpha Fly this year. I also took this shoe out on my weekly long run to see just how well it performs and if all the hype was really worth it. So just before we get into the video, I want to quickly let you know that I bought these shoes with my own money when they went live to the general public. No one is going to see this video before it's live on YouTube and all the things I say are my honest thoughts. Right, let's get cracking. So starting off with the specifications, the Alpha Fly 3 comes in at a staggering £284.99p, which makes it £10 more expensive than the previous version of the Alpha Fly. This makes it one of Nike's most expensive super shoes and one of the most expensive carbon shoes in today's market. The weight of the Alpha Fly on Nike's website comes in at 218 grams for a men's UK size 9. This supposedly makes it 31 grams lighter than the Alpha Fly 2, which weighed 249 grams for the same shoe size. Now, I personally wear a size nine and a half, and when I weighed my shoes, they came in at 226 grams, which still makes them 23 grams lighter than the previous version of the Alpha Flies. In fact, I'm pretty certain I read somewhere that this is Nike's lightest ever shoe. In terms of stack height, as you'd expect, you've got 40 millimeters worth of zoom x foam in the heel and then in the forefoot you've got 32 millimeters worth of foam along with the air zoom units and for the first time ever this is all done in one continuous sole of the shoe but more on that later this gives the runner a eight millimeter heel toe drop and provides so much cushioning and responsiveness underfoot it's just so pretty to look at Right, let's move on to have a look at some of the improvements made to the Alpha Fly in its third generation. So going back to the point I made about the continuous sole on the Alpha Fly 3, this is one of the first improvements of many Nike has made this year. I, for one, never really liked the chiseled design on the first or second iteration of the Alpha Fly, and I was actually more drawn to other carbon shoes because of it. But someone at Nike clearly had the same thoughts as me because I genuinely think that the continuous design looks so much better. This leads me nicely onto improvement number two, which is the wider carbon fiber fly plate that is now found in the sole of the Alpha Fly. Thanks to the sole of the shoe's continuous design, Nike was actually able to incorporate a much wider carbon fly plate into the sole of the shoe, which not only offers more energy return, but also offers so much more stability under the runner's foot. The third and final improvement to the sole of the shoe is Nike's brand new fast shot outsole, which offers so much more traction and grip on a variety of different surfaces. I didn't think that it would actually make that much difference, but I actually picked up on it quite a lot during the run test in a later part of the video. Moving on to the upper part of the shoe, we have the brand new Atomnit 3.0. The best way I can describe how this looks is it's like frozen spider webs, but for your feet. At a first glance, it doesn't look like there's going to be enough material there to keep your foot sturdy and secure. But surprisingly, it's actually super stable and is one of the key factors in making the Alpha Fly 3 as light as it is. And then finally, in the heel of the shoe, we have a pair of lofted Flyknit heel pods, which have been incorporated to help support the heel and the Achilles of the runner. They feel a lot comfier than the heel pods in my Vaporfly 3s, so Nike have clearly pushed it this year when it comes to making a shoe that's not only fast but is also super comfortable to run in. Now it's all well and good hearing about the specifications and improvements made to the Alpha Fly 3 but personally I'm someone who wants my proof to be in my pudding if you catch my drift. If you don't I'm on about taking them on a run test. Now I won't lie to you 
When these shoes finally arrived, I was genuinely like a kid on Christmas. I was twitching to take them out the box and try them on a run. Now the UK got hit with some pretty severe rain over the last week or so, and ever since the roads have been caked in mud, which probably isn't the best environment to take a white pair of shoes out running. But I'm impatient, so I took them on a run anyway. I took them on my weekend long run last Sunday, which equated to 11.4 miles in total. 3.8 miles easy, 3.8 miles steady, and then 3.8 miles at marathon pace. It's by no means a massive workout, but it was long enough for me to break the shoes in and get a genuine feeling of how they are when they're on my feet so I can share my thoughts with you guys. I'll let you watch the run footage and then I'll share the splits and my thoughts with you straight after. So in terms of the splits, they were as follows. 8.38, 8.25, 8.18, 8.24, 8.19, 8.09, 8.14, 7.58, 7.21, 7.17, 7.15, and 7.27. The good thing about that run is it tested everything from my easy pace all the way through to my marathon pace, so I genuinely know how these shoes are gonna feel no matter how fast I am running. And because I'm slowly turning into a content demon, I jotted down all of my thoughts straight after the run so I could share them with you in this video. So straight off the bat, the first thing I noticed was the Alphafly 3s fit true to size, which is a massive relief because there is no way I'd have been able to return them and swap them for a different size. I have quite an average size foot in terms of width and height, and I found the Alphafly 3s a little bit snug at first, but the moment your shoe's been in the foot and they loosen up, it's absolutely golden. The Atomnit 3.0 is super breathable and keeps your feet feeling so refreshed without making you think like you're going to get hypothermia in your toes. One of the first downsides I found to the Alphafly was the length of the shoelaces. In terms of shoelaces, they do their job and they feel super secure when they're tied up. However, I would just prefer for there to be a little bit more length at the end of the shoelaces in case I need to do a double knot or if I want to wear my shoes slightly looser. Now that is a very niche downside and it would in no way put me off buying another pair. Now in terms of the actual running experience that the shoes provide, it's genuinely elite. The combination of 40 mil worth of stack height, a massive carbon plate and a super lightweight framework makes this feel like a marathon runner's dream shoe. If you've watched any of my previous running videos, you'll know the majority of my training is done in the Invincible 3 which weigh a staggering 90 grams more than the Alpha Flies. And I tell you what, that 90 gram decrease makes so much difference on a long run. Now, moving on, let's talk about the Air Zoom Pods. I always thought people bought the Alpha Flies just so they could have the Air Zoom Pods and look a little bit cooler at their park run. But it turns out they actually do more than I initially thought. During my run, every time that my foot hit the ground, these pods would compress and then snap back to their original position, which almost gave me a boost of energy in every single step I did. And weirdly enough, this made it quite hard to run slow, but made it so much easier to run fast. Which doesn't sound like it should make sense, but once you try the shoe, you'll know what I mean. So I would like to formally apologize to anyone I have judged for buying Alpha Flies because it turns out the zoom pods are for more than just looks. However, the zoom pods aren't perfect. If you're someone who runs without headphones, you might want to get ready to hear a lot of squeaking. As soon as I started my run, I noticed quite a lot of squeaking noise coming from one of the zoom pod units. Now, I don't know exactly which shoe was making it, but it didn't disappear for the entire run. This seems to be pretty common amongst other reviews I've watched and read over the last week or so, so just bear it in mind when you're buying the shoes. Honestly, it feels like I haven't even scratched the surface when it comes to reviewing this shoe, and as I put more miles on them throughout my training and my races, I'll be sure to share all of my thoughts along the way. All of the downsides that I've found to this shoe so far have been very specific to me and are very niche 
to the point that it would not put me off buying another pair. Overall, the Alpha Fly 3s are so much better than I expected them to be, and as a beginner marathon runner, I cannot wait to put more miles on them and race in them in Manchester. <sighs> People are going to think I do this on purpose. This feels like a bit of a pinch me moment because never did I think I'd be reviewing a pair of Alpha Flies for this channel, let alone a pair in the prototype colorway. Speaking of which, I read somewhere online that all the orange parts found on a prototype Nike shoe shows where all the innovations to the design have been made. Can someone in the comments let me know if that's true or not because it's quite a cool fact. As you can probably all guess, the Alpha Fly 3s are going to be my choice of shoe for the Manchester Marathon in April this year. I do however plan to test them on some smaller 5 and 10k races prior to the marathon. The smaller races are also going to be a great chance for me to test my race day kit and pretty much do a dress rehearsal of what I'll be wearing on the day. Now for anyone who missed out on the first launch of the Alpha Fly 3, Nike have already released the next launch date for the new colorway. I believe it's sometime in early March, so if you have any other questions that I haven't answered in this video about the Alpha Flies, please let me know and I will do my best to give you the answer before the next launch date. That does sadly bring me to the end of today's video. I really hope you've enjoyed it because I have had an absolute blast making it and I really hope you've learnt something new about Nike's newest super shoe. Please consider leaving a like on the video as it helps me so much more than you think and it really does mean the absolute world to me. And if you want to see more videos just like this from me in the future, maybe consider hitting that subscribe button whilst you're down there. I hope you all have a great rest of your day, I'll catch you all in the next one and don't forget, no bad days. Didn't work out how I planned it to. <laughs>